What's up guys, Tech Savvy Buyer here. So today what I'm going to do is review the Razer Phone 2. Now this bad boy was released back in October of 2018. And the reason I'm doing this right now is because one, this is one hell of a kick-ass phone. It's got super, super cool specs that's very beefy and very powerful. And it's on sale for only 400 bucks right now on Amazon, which makes this an absolute steal to go ahead and purchase. I'm gonna show you guys what all you get included inside the box. We'll do a quick unboxing. Naturally, we'll go over the specs. I'll show you what are some of the cool features that I really enjoy on this one, what actually works, what's practical, as well as we'll do a ton of different emulation tests on this to basically show you how good this thing is for a gaming device. Now, we'll cover all these good things, but first, let's get a word from today's video sponsor coming up. Today's video is sponsored by GVGmall.com. GVGmall carries a wide variety of game currencies and gift cards that you could use to take your gaming to the next level. If you're looking for a fresh copy of Windows or Microsoft Office, then you can certainly find those on GVGmall.com as well. They are priced very competitively and offer legit copies of Microsoft software. You can pick up a copy of Windows 10 Pro for under 15 bucks. Visit gvgmall.com for more information and use code TSB to save during checkout. So definitely check out gvgmall.com if you need to grab a fresh copy of Windows 10 or Microsoft Office or a number of different kinds of software. Anyways, so today what we're going to be doing is looking at this bad boy right here. This is Razer's second attempt at a smartphone and it is touted as one of their flagship gaming smartphones. It's got a number of really, really cool features and the internal specs on this thing is pretty solid. So overall, it's a very, very nice phone. Now, I'm gonna walk you guys through really quick a nice unboxing of this to see what you get inside the package when you get this in the mail. And again, just to remind you guys, there's a limited time promotion going where the phone is actually 50% off both on Razer's website or on Amazon. So if you have a Prime account, definitely take advantage of that. It's only $400. And a lot of my points on this review is gonna be focused around the fact that the price cut that this device has received really makes this a super, super contendable phone that you're gonna look for if you're trying to get a phone to do mobile gaming or if you're trying to get a phone to do any kind of emulation as well. So let's start off with that unboxing real quick and then I'll walk you through all the other stuff on there. So as you guys can tell, this phone is a powerhouse when it comes to the chipset that's being used, the GPU that's being used, and overall the features that you're getting for the price that you're paying. Now one could also argue that you could pick up a Red Magic 3 or a Black Shark Pro 2 and even get features that are arguably better than this in some cases and around similar price tags but not exactly comparable. So for starters, those phones are a little bit more pricey, albeit they're a little bit more than about 70, 80 bucks compared to what you're paying here. But the biggest difference I would say between this and some of those Chinese mobile phones is the inclusion of Dolby Atmos speakers that are front facing as well as the 120 Hertz screen. Those two features alone really sets apart this device compared to any of the other phones that I've looked at in the past or that are currently available in the market around the same price range. Now the overall build quality of the Razer 2 is super, super solid. When trying to bend this or see if there's any flex in the phone, I really couldn't push this at all. Similar to how the iPhone used to have that issue or even the Samsung with its plastic slash glass mix of build. The back of this has a mirror-like glass finish, which is a fingerprint magnet, I'm not gonna lie guys, but it could have been worse, honestly. Any other phone that had a glass finish, which I would use with slightly oil fingertips or slightly, you know, average sweating on your hands or whatever, you'd get tons of fingerprints all over the device. In this case, it wasn't that bad, it was okay. 
So not a huge plus on that, but the reason why they went to do this type of finish is so that you can support wireless charging on here. Now inside, like I shared over the specs, there is a 4,000 milliampere battery in this, which gives it a decent runtime. Several people on Amazon and other reviewers said that the battery time wasn't all that great. In my testing so far, I haven't had any issues and the phone has lasted me about two days on a single charge with moderate gaming. Now, if you're gonna be doing a ton of gaming on this, expect those numbers to change and expect the performance to be a little bit different. Now, build quality, like I mentioned, is super solid. The phone has no flex in it. It's a very rectangular, modular type design and there is basically no room on this to have any kind of curves if you look at it. The front has curveless design, the sides, all of it, it's just a flat piece of metal, basically is what it feels like. And the entire body is made of aluminum. There's actually a pretty decent video by Jerry Rig Everything. Huge shout out to him, by the way, awesome channel. Check him out. Um, he has a good video on doing a scratch test and build quality test. He basically destroys the Razer 2 all over camera. So if you guys wanna see him scratch the whole thing up and test how it works after, even he said that this thing is really solidly made and that's actually really true. Now, another thing that I kinda like and I don't like is the fingerprint reader. What I like about it is that it's super accurate. Just pressing it and using it, it's instantaneous. I didn't have any issues where it's lagging or it's not reading my fingerprint pretty clear. And even after taking damage, it still stays pretty clean. The flip side of it, however, is that it's super flush with the phone. So there's no physical sensation when you touch the phone that there's a button there. And sometimes you'll end up pressing the top or the bottom or around the button, but not actually on the button because it's completely flush with the side. That is something I wish Razer would address in their next revision, like they have with the volume rocker buttons on the side. Those have a little bit of an incline over the top side. So it makes it easier to feel when you're not able to see it in the dark and you can actually feel where the buttons are. So let's talk about the features that I mentioned that actually set this phone apart. Now, the Dolby Atmos speakers on this device are phenomenal. I don't think I've used a smartphone that goes as loud as this with the front-facing speakers, even the old-school ones that used to have Beats Audio included in them or Harman Kardon speakers. This thing gets super loud. Check out this clip of House of Cards on Netflix and how loud this phone actually gets. This is without any post-processing whatsoever. I'm glad you came over. It's not fair. If I thought you were intruding, I wouldn't have come downstairs. So that's pretty loud. I mean, this this is enormously loud. You have to actually use this phone to appreciate how loud the speakers are and how clear the sound quality is as well. Now, aside from the speakers, the other real cool factor of this phone is that it has a 120 hertz screen, which means you're gonna get super buttery smooth resolution when you're scrolling through different items. And this is something you'll only be able to see when you're actually using the phone. So I'll do my best to show this to you guys on screen, but there's a huge difference when you compare this to any regular smartphone. So for example, I had reviewed the Moki i7s a week ago or so and this is a standard 60 hertz phone slash gaming device when you put the two side by side there is a massive difference in how the overall smoothness is of the phones when you're just navigating from menu to menu now of course we'll dive into the emulation performance and how i would totally recommend at the same price point you should definitely pick the razor phone 2 over this guy however there is one thing that i want to share with you guys before we do that now again the 120 hertz screen this isn't something that other devices have i've seen other phones that come up to 90 hertz. Now the only other phone that's supposed to have 120 hertz refresh rate is the Asus ROG Phone 2, which is not out yet. So I'm interested to see how that one plays out. Now another cool thing you guys can probably see on the back is that there is their Razer RGB lit logo. And now there is an app inside the phone that comes pre-installed, it's their Chroma app, and you can use that to change the different colors. If you wanna leave it static, you wanna have it breathing, or if you want it to cycle through the entire RGB spectrum, it's totally up to you on how you wanna customize it. You can even alter the brightness settings. Now bear in mind that when you do keep this on all the time, even if your phone screen is disabled, it's gonna juice up some battery. Not a huge amount, but it will make an impact on the overall battery life. And I I suspect that a lot of other users that were having issues with batteries didn't have the correct settings. Now inside the phone, you're also gonna get access to adjusting the phone's performance mode. You can do this overall so that it brute forces any app that's being played on it to have an optimized gaming performance mode, or you can optimize every single app that you want to take advantage of that. So it's not running on full performance on let's say Google Chrome if you have that open or on Netflix because those aren't you know super hungry, CPU hungry, apps or memory hungry apps. But if you're gonna be playing any kind of Android games on here, or if you're doing emulation, you definitely wanna take advantage of that feature and step it up to the full performance that you can actually gain. You can even adjust the frames per second that you're doing. So if you wanna set that app to only refresh at 60 Hertz or 120 or even 90, 
you can do that with this phone. So there's definitely cool. There's a lot of features in this phone that I saw that I haven't seen in other devices, partly because I haven't tested every device out there, but the ones that I use regularly, like an iPhone or a Samsung Note 8 or a Samsung S10 or whatever, those phones don't have features kind of like the Razer phone too. So I like that they really tout this as a gaming phone because truly it is a gaming phone. Well, enough of all the features. So you guys saw all the specs. Do you know that this thing is a brute? Let me show you how the emulation is on this. Forward, even if you don't wanna watch this, I will tell you up front, this thing totally destroyed every Dolphin game that I threw at it. I had zero slowdowns on any game that I literally tested on Dolphin. Now, with that being said, the only flip side is if it's a game that naturally doesn't work well on the Dolphin emulator without a ton of power behind it, you might see some issues here and there with it on this. Aside from Dolphin, anything pre-Dolphin, Nintendo 64, basically every single thing that the Moki i7S handled really well, this thing handles it even better. So for example, when you played PPSS PP games on here or PSP games on here, you could take it up to two times the resolution to three times depending on the game, like God of War, for example, would have a few hiccups here and there at three times the resolution. With the Razer Phone 2, you can boost any PSP game up to four or five times its native resolution and still have playable frame rates without dips here and there. That was definitely a mind-blowing experience to see some PSP games in really crisp detail being played on a mobile phone and not on a computer. And the other emulator that most of you guys are probably wondering if this phone can handle is Daemon PS2. Now aside from the controversy of actually using that app, it is the only app that you can use today that supports PS2 games. Now in my entire experience testing Daemon PS2 on other devices or even on this device, it's really hit or miss just because of the compatibility issues with the emulator itself and the game that you're playing. But overall, if you do find a game that works great on Daemon PS2, the specs that are inside this are more than capable of running that because as I mentioned in other videos, the GameCube and the PS2 kind of came out around the same time frame or in the same era, let's call it. And the GameCube also had significant brute behind it, similar to what the PS2 did at that time. So if this is handling Dolphin games, it's not gonna have an issue to handling PS2 games. I did test it a bit, but I really wasn't comfortable with any of the gameplay that I saw to say, hey, this is a solid emulator for PS2 games or a solid device for PS2 games. That's on part with the emulator itself, and that emulator has a long way to go before you're gonna actually get full PS2 games playable without any artifacting or slowdowns or speed hacks on this device or on any device for that matter. Anyways, let's take a look at some of that gameplay from the Dolphin emulator. I'm sure you guys are gonna be pleased to see how good the games run on this and overall how awesome the performance is of this phone. Now in my video, you'll also notice that I'm using a gamepad. This is a Seitaki mobile game controller that you can use with any Android device. I will leave a link for this in the description below where you guys can pick one up. This is by far the best one that I've used to date, aside from having a you know DualShock 4 or an Xbox One controller. This is really good and it makes a really comfortable handheld device out of your phone. So anyways, if you guys have any questions on that, let me know.
So as you saw, it totally demolished all the Dolphin games that I was throwing at it. There was absolutely no issues playing any games. If you guys have any questions or if you want me to do follow-up videos on different games that you can test with this, let me know in the comments below. Of course, guys, this is pretty much the end of this video. I would highly recommend you guys pick this up. If you have a budget of around $400 and you're looking at the Black Shark, the Nubia Red Magic 3, the Moki i7S, it depends on what you want. If you want the phone to actually be used on a GSM service or a CDMA service, you're going to have to pick pretty carefully. I'm not sure about the Asian phones that are out, but I can confirm that if you are if you have your eyes set on the Razer Phone 2 and you are a Sprint customer, you will not be able to use this phone. This will only work with T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon, so just keep that in mind. Now, other carriers that piggyback off of Sprint or basically are CDMA carriers will not work with this device, so make sure you have that listed in your head before you go out and purchase this. But aside Aside from that, $400, the specs you get, the memory, the included storage on the space, the Dolby Atmos speakers, the 120 hertz refresh screen, and the screen's resolution itself make this an absolute steal, and I cannot recommend you to not buy this device. This is fantastic. You should absolutely consider purchasing this. If you're looking for a gaming phone that's also a good daily driver, solid build quality, great feature set all together, and stellar performance in gaming, both for Android games and emulation games. I will leave a link in the description below where you can go ahead and pick up a Razer Phone 2. This is absolutely worth it in 2019, guys, and for the price, I can't can't say that you should avoid this at all. You really need to pick this up. Anyways, that is all. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this comment. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you guys are new to the channel, do consider subscribing for more content similar to what I showed you guys today. And of course, guys, I will entertain any questions you have in the comment section below as I best try to. And coming up soon, quick note for all my regular viewers. Guys, I'm starting a Patreon account and I'm going to give you guys a little bit of an update on that in the coming few, uh, videos. But hopefully it should be up within a few days and I'll give you guys some super, super exciting news for the different tiers that I'm keeping in there that you're really going to appreciate. And of course, I'm always open to feedback. If you guys think that I should change those up, I will change it up because at the end, I'm doing this for you guys and for the growth of this channel. But anyways, I appreciate you guys sticking around to the end of this video. I will see you on my next one. So peace out.